everyone welcome back to two marks and the spark we had a whole bunch of technical difficulties which is why you haven't seen the episode before this one yet um at least as of for us recording this it'll probably be up eventually if i can ever get the file to work um this file should work though because the issue that we had with that last episode has been resolved well anyway russ we're here to talk about the elimination chamber yes yes indeed <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> do I look like I've been awake since 3 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, well, I am. So. Well, th th there is a chance that both of us, and when I say a chance, I mean 100% chance that both of us will be asleep again once this show is over. Well, um, I'll probably, I'll probably take a good nap. Folks, but, uh, we woke up oh, at the ass uh, crack of dawn. Yep. Yeah, good show. Good show. It was a very good show. Uh, Russ, I know we're going to talk about this later. I just want your opinion on the placement of the matches. I, I thought it was weird they put the men's match out as late as they did if they knew Rhea and Nia were going to end. But, I mean, any other year, yes, th that match does not close the show. But because it's right. Rhea and because it's right. Australia, they right. didn't have a choice. Another thing, another big takeaway from tonight, WWE has their pyro budget back. Oh, boy, I Holy. guess. You know, plus a Holy bunch of shit. And everything else, you know, plus, you know, they must have had uh, a deal going with the tourism uh, board because we had a lot of little mini travelogues. I never seen such so many different pristine, beautiful, crystal clear shorelines and beaches and everybody looking so young and vigorous and healthy and pretty you know i you know it's like if i could afford it i'd get on a plane and get to australia right now well the stadium they were in this optus stadium i'd never seen it before right that's a beautiful looking building i like uh, it nice and they claim 52,000, which is actually not like some of the time when they claim that, where it's just, you know, not physically possible. Right. It is possible that they actually had 52,000 in there. I don't know that for sure. We'll have to wait on that. But I I don't think that is an entirely insane number. Um, Now, could it be wrong? Yes, but it's not impossible. Um, And it was very loud in there. Well, the show kicked yeah. off. Yeah. They had a they had a match on the pre-show. I didn't see it. I did. Caught it. It you was watched... all right. Kabuki Warriors versus the uh, uh, champions defending against uh, Australian Indy Hartwell and uh, Candice LeRae. Good match. It, it uh, they got the crowd warmed up, and the champions retained, and then we're on to the main show. And the first takeaway you get when you're watching this show is, holy shit, this looks like a fucking WrestleMania. Yeah, big show. Big, big feel. Big stadium. Because, Fortunately, the weather was beautiful. And remember, we talked about on the show that had issues getting to Damon, uh, there was a chance it was going to rain tonight in Australia. So Perfect. perhaps we lucked out. Correct. Correct. Well, not we. They lucked out. Um, obviously, we are on the other side of the world. But this show kicked off with the Elimination Chamber match. The Women's Elimination Chamber match. Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, and Becky Lynch. I thought in terms of an opening match, they couldn't have found a better one here. Yeah. For what was on this card and what would come later. I mean... Well-paced. Tiffany Stratton is fucking over. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and I'd be amused. I, I mean, she's good. I just, you know, I don't hate her. I just, I'll just give, I'll give her a chance. She's way over with everybody except me. Not to, like, she's very talented though. But they well, all are. Liv Morgan got a massive pop, as you would pretty much expect. Yeah, she did, and she she wrestled very. Everyone, all of them had a really good uh, match. 
at this point, if Liv Morgan doesn't get a big pop, it's kind of a surprise because it's like she's just over. And remember when everybody thought she was kind of just a fad or whatever? And then you realize, oh, wait a second. I think she's just over. Yeah. It's like, that's all there is to it. Um, well, Becky ends up winning this. Yes. Which means we are going to be getting Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, presumably, of course, because Rhea is wrestling later on this show. But I think that every, uh, we both everybody knew what was going to happen. If there. I remember correctly, yeah, we did. Right, and and although I said that, uh, although that wouldn't be my personal favorite, it wouldn't be uh, make any sense to book it with my personal favorite winning from a business point of view because. You got to remember, this is WrestleMania 40, and it's also the first WrestleMania with TKO, and they want the big marquee money match. They want Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. Which is the money match at this but point. Plus, uh, plus why still, I, th I still think we're somehow or another, we're going to get Rock versus Roman. Not this year. Well, I, uh, <laughs> we'll see yet. I, 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 it's hard to tell how much we're being worked. I feel like we're being worked, but I could be wrong. We're not that, being that's worked a on other, that's a whole other subject, but uh, who would you have wanted to win? Who is your like personal favorite here? Because I have an opinion on this. Who would you have wanted to win if it didn't have to be Becky? Um, oh, if it didn't have to be Becky, yeah, I uh, I would, my. Personal favorite would have been Raquel Rodriguez. See, the problem with that is Raquel isn't good enough on the mic to build a mania match. Exactly. <laughs> She's good enough in the ring, but... Right. See what I mean? I said, we, we always think about, oh, we want our favorite to win, but the older I get, the more I watch it, I think about the business side of it, you know, what makes sense. And a lot of mania is built on, okay, how much can we do with the build and how much can we do promo wise? How much can you really do with Rhea and Raquel promo wise? Because Raquel is not that strong on the mic. Liv would have made a lot Becky of sense. And, Becky and, and uh, Rhea, you know, we're going to get a lot of great promos, a lot of great moments. Leading Liv would have made show. a lot of sense because Liv is really good on the mic. Liv and Rhea have that storyline that, I'm fairly certain Liv yeah, and Rhea have, may they have a lot of history. Liv and Rhea may end up co-main eventing SummerSlam. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Um, because I I think even if Rhea loses at Mania, she'll get the belt back before SummerSlam and it'll be her and Liv uh probably for the title. Um I I wouldn't be surprised. I thought maybe they'd do it at Mania, but it kind of feels like SummerSlam because I don't think Rhea's losing at WrestleMania. I'm going to be honest with you. I would be very surprised if she did. Yes. Because Becky do. doesn't Becky doesn't need the belt. Rhea really doesn't need the belt either, but you know, if you're building yes. to this Liv Rhea thing, which is clearly their end game here is Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. That is very clearly where they're going in the end here. Like, once this whole thing gets wrapped up, SummerSlam probably. I hope they both stay healthy until then, you know, because you never know. They could always be sidelined with an injury. Well, all six women in this match just kicked all the ass in the world. It was good to see Naomi getting a pay-per-view match immediately upon her return. Yep. And Very well. Becky ends up getting the win, which just made all the sense in the world. And a very good match. Tiffany Stratton almost died. Uh, Looked like it. And then we got another uh, fucking fantastic match, frankly. Damian Priest and Finn Balor against New Catch Republic. Dude. <laughs> New Catch Republic. Wow. This was really, really very, very good. I was, I was impressed. Not... From start to finish, this was a really good WWE style tag team match. 
and uh, this match was great. Pete Dunn is great. Yeah, I mean, how could you not love that guy. I get why they didn't win here, but they look great in defeat, and you could really make an argument that they're going to win the titles sooner I think rather than later. A future for them, definitely. Well, I'm pretty sure Pete Dunn's going to end up winning a world title at some point, just because look who's booking the show. Uh, oh, yeah. Exactly. Look, look at who's booking, and then you'll realize very quickly. Oh, wait a second. This guy's going to be a champion in like two years. Okay, I get it. Absolutely. And then uh, we had the Grayson Waller effect. Right. Ah. Didn't expect to see Austin Theory. Well, they're a tag team. But he, but he, the crowd did not like him, but they loved his partner because once again, he, they're another one of the uh, Australian wrestlers. Grayson Waller I, effect. And then we got some I didn't like this segment. for both of the Cody and for Seth. I didn't like this segment. It was a good time filler, I guess. You know, the promos were okay, but. They could have trimmed a half hour off the show, but I don't know. Crowd seemed to be into it. Cody took forever to get to the. I mean, oh, I know. Fucking. And Rhea's entrance later on is also long, but this is like. Yeah, ridiculous. Because. What he was doing, what Cody was doing is like the big baby face thing, you know, where they high five everybody or whatever. But Cody kept going backwards, high fiving people on the other side and then coming back again and high fiving people on this side. So right. it was like, dude. I think we just need to get used to the idea that uh, what we used to call pay per views, what they now call what premium live events. <clears throat> they're going to be four hour events. That's just going to be the norm. And, and I'm know. fine with that. If we're not doing 75 minute entrances. Yeah, they could, they could have thrown in another match. Couldn't they? They, they could you have know? thrown in, they Bronson could have done Reed, Cody Bronson. versus Seth Rollins for fuck's sake. Yeah. Well, Bronson Reed, well, he's another Australian who was not on the card. Well, yeah, that was weird. I thought that was weird. But anyway, this took forever yeah. to do anything. By the time Cody got to the ring, I swear it had been 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And he calls out The Rock, and this is clearly heading towards a tag match. It sure looks like it. But, and of course, The Rock doesn't bother to show up, you know. No, but I think uh, we're, they're they're working the, they're working with this thing. How to what degree is it's it's all kayfabe? Who knows? But you know the Cody Cryberries thing is is now a, a, an official thing. You know, and it's funny. Yeah, it is. And then we got the men's elimination chamber, and, and re remember how we talked about long ass shit in between yes, matches before dude from the time the but from the time the grace and waller shit ended to the time this finally decided maybe we want to get started here uh it was like 20 minutes at least and it was like it's what time was it by the time the chamber got in the ring what six seven o'clock in the morning like that, that, yep. And it's like, dude. Um, and you body, knew this yeah, match was going to be a half hour. My body's telling me, you haven't felt this way in years, not since you worked the night shift, you know? And it's like, dude, I just was like, what the fuck are they doing? Do they realize half their audience is like barely awake right now and doesn't even really know what's going on? Well, they got to deal with their live audience, you know. 
Well, I'm, already, I'm sure there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, American fans that haven't watched it yet. They're going to get up on Saturday and watch it whenever they want to. But you and I, oh, there you go. See, look at there. You're making yourself tired, young man. But I like to, when it when it's one of these events. I like to uh, get my reactions fresh in my mind. Especially yeah. since I I left my very well done notes on the other side of town at my house <laughs> from where I'm well, at right now, like an idiot. A little inside baseball. Me and Russ decided late yesterday to do this this morning. Sure. Because we, we didn't really have a full-fledged plan. We were just kind of like, we're going to do it when we do it on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then me and Russ talked yesterday and it was like, you know, we better just do this thing right after the show. Exactly. And then of course we got up this morning and we're like, this might've been a fucking mistake. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing okay. You know, I shoot. And then you we know, had the men's elimination chamber the match. And we're dead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so and this, this one was pretty good too. This was also very good. Full of all the, the entrances were full of all sorts of uh, uh, shenanigans, you know. Oh uh, yeah, you know, like, ju jumping up on top of the so and so's cage to do his big pose, you know. Was it Logan? I liked that. I mean, uh, no, Bobby, Bobby Lashley. Uh, there were a lot of really good moments in this. And then we had a little surprise guest appearance too. Yeah, well, that surprise guest appearance comes when uh, there's a few guys in the ring, and it looks like LA Knight's about to about to get some momentum going, and then he gets absolutely murdered by a steel chair with an intruding AJ Styles. Exactly. Who who cements he is. Uh the validity of his heel turn and he no uncertain it. terms, you know, and he can do it without, you know, he's been a heel before. He makes a pretty good heel, actually. He does. And yeah. uh, he's been, he's been going back and forth ever since the old TNA days between good and bad guy. And I mean, like everybody's going to complain because he broke into the chamber and, Beat the hell out of L.A. Knight. Doesn't bother me one bit. L.A. Knight, I mean, he's all right, but <laughs> I I enjoyed seeing A.J. whoop him. But, Does that make you me know, a bad guy? L.A. Knight has to be on WrestleMania. He's too over not to be. Right. And this guarantees he'll be on WrestleMania because it's going to be him and A.J. at Mania. I almost guarantee it. Yeah, and the finish here yeah. comes with uh, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton being the last two, and these two had a pretty solid like eight minute one on one here at the end. It, this was very impressive, very. And Randy yeah. did such a good job of making Drew look like a million dollars here. Yes, he did. You know, I I was very impressed. You know, the, I they don't remember any. You know, during the matches there were no big cringe moments, you know, which in the WWE event, and that's a really, really good thing. And McIntyre looks like he's going to win, and then they go back and forth. And then Logan Paul, who had just gotten eliminated off an RKO by Randy Orton, right as Randy hits the RKO on Drew, looking like he's going to win. Brass knucks right to the face of Randy, and Randy went down like a fucking tree in the forest. I mean, oh, yeah, boom, yeah, and he didn't like move, he, he told... looked dead. Randy Orton looked dead in the middle of the ring. Drew turns him over, throws one arm over him, one, two, three matches over. Right now, here's the thing Drew, he's the bad guy, but now technically, he didn't cheat, he didn't cheat. No, he took advantage of it. Even if he had used the knuckles, there's no DQ, but you could say, no, somebody else knocked him out and he pinned him. 
you can't say Drew McIntyre's changed. How can you say he's changed? Why he's just the way he's always been. He's always been honest, and his true fans know that. <laughs> Listen to is me. Russ a heel? Did I miss I the mean, Russ? No, I just, I just have always been high on Drew McIntyre. Like I said, it's time to quit worrying about the future and deal with the present. And I think this is another one. I think did we both predict Drew would win yeah. this? And I thought I there think, was an outside chance that, like, maybe Randy or something, but. Well, I'm sure they're going to find something. A uh, show as big as WrestleMania, if you've got Randy Orton available, he has to do something. You know? Well, I do have official attendance numbers now. All right. What does it say officially? This is according to uh, the Australia Tourism Board or who? Uh, WrestleTex. Oh, there you see. I'm being a smart ass again. I'm sorry. Yeah, the Australian Tourism Board, aka WrestleTix. They said there uh, was four million people there. Well, they were set up for forty nine thousand eight hundred and seventy eight, and the final total as of this was as of noon yesterday. So there could this could have ended up being they could have had a thousand people walk up. I doubt it. Um, the distributed at noon yesterday was 48,777. Again, it was somewhere in the 49,000 neighborhood was the actual number. They said 52. That doesn't offend me. Well, that's entirely possible. There could have been that many people walk up, you know, just, you know, people that go, you know, about on their walkabout, you know, you know. And if you watched the press event yesterday, they took over Perth with this thing. Yes, I did see that. That was pretty good. And um, then we get to the main event, and I got to say, I don't like Nia Jax, but I fucking love this match. Yes, it was a good match. Did they mention that she had been born in Australia? Yes. Okay. I didn't get... Only <laughs> about 100 times. Well, that's what I thought, but... I didn't know if that was a bit of trivia that stuck in my brain or if I'd actually heard it. Oh, well, Naya comes out and this crowd was ready to murder her from yeah. the second she walked out there. This was the hottest crowd I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it was. It, I Especially seen... at the end. Yeah. Well, that's an international crowd, but it, it reminds it's a bunch of different crowd but it's remind me of backlash puerto rico very very passionate crowd uh i think they mentioned on the pre-show they said the crowd was very rowdy but very nice that sounds from what i know of australian people that that sounds about right you know because they come up to me and say hey look at the fatty fat boy look at him. he's a big tub of fat and they'd be like being very very friendly and nice to you <laughs> You know, well, Naya comes out and this crowd's ready to rip her apart. Oh man, they wanted to kill her. And then here comes Rhea, and of course, it's just it's loud in there. And mm -hmm. both here and at the end, the pyro and the crowd sound just went like this and made a mess. It's, um, it was really a, a very impressive. And they're singing Rhea's theme song. And she's taking her sweet-ass time to come to the ring, of course. Yeah. And she shows the back of her jacket. It's got the Australian flag on it. Whatever. Because for one night only, Rhea Ripley is a babyface. Yes. And, very, and they very, built this match like it. Very believable, too. And uh, I texted you early in the match when Nia had a lot of momentum, I said, dude, if they actually put Nia over here, there's not going to be a stadium left. Yeah. They never get away with that. They're going to burn that fucking building down. Yeah. That wouldn't happen. There would have nope. been a fucking rock. I am convinced seeing how they reacted to Nia and how they reacted to fucking Dominic earlier in the night. Oh yeah. Dude, there would have been a fucking problem in that building. Potentially a large one. Oh, really? Yeah, the crowd is very high. Very. 
And there was a couple of points where it looked like Nia might actually win here. And dude, I was like, oh my God, we're about to witness a riot on live television. Yeah, that's why the near falls worked work, work, work very well with this. This match wasn't overly long, was it? No, it was only about 12 minutes, I think. But that's, yeah, but you know, just about right after a long show. I saw people asking online, like, why is this the main event? It's like, isn't it obvious? They they don't go to Australia ever. They don't do Australian tours. They don't they go to that's, Australia every once in a blue moon. That's just 2018. When they had that super showdown and Rhea wasn't even on the roster yet. Right. Or if she was, she was in NXT. And she certainly wasn't the star she is now. Absolutely not. And they sent her out there and she carried Nia to a pretty damn good match. It was a very simple match, but it kind of had to be. Um, Because if you were trying to do anything crazy or extravagant, you weren't going to be able to do it. Well, I just had a feeling that, you know, I have been a huge fan of Nia Jack's work in her previous runs, but I think she's improved. A lot, plus the fact that uh, I think she's improved in the ring and on the mic, but I also think that working with Rhea Ripley, she could have a good match with almost anybody. Yeah, Rhea could have a good match with just about anybody. And probably again, the this... ba- uh, probably the most entertaining Nia Jax match that I could ever remember seeing. Yeah, if not, it's up there. Um, it is by far the best. And uh, Rhea, all the credit to her. I mean, they handed her a lemon here and she made lemonade out of it. So, and everybody's saying, well, they could have given Rhea a bigger match for Australia. Who? Everybody else is in a fucking program or in the chamber. Right. Well, you know, some people just have to. That, this, now, is my, I understand. this is just my opinion. You know, consider what we were getting barely over a year ago uh, what WWE was I'm not complaining about this show at all I'm not going to nitpick about oh yes. you could have a bigger match you know I think some people I especially online but you see them on podcasts too are just no matter what any company does they're going to bitch about it and whine about it you know because in their imagination, they think they could book something that would make more money than the people that are. And the only thing that would have made more it. money here is Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. That would have done better business. But to the same key, if you want Liv to be the baby face there, it wouldn't have worked here. Right. If the idea is Liv is going to be the baby face in that program, you could not have done that in Australia because Liv Morgan's going to get the shit boot out of her. Uh- Whoever was fighting Rhea tonight was not going to get cheered. <laughs> well, I don't, gonna, uh, I'll go ahead. They, they could have sent motherfucking Teresa out there to face Rhea Ripley, and she'd have gotten booed. I, I'll probably win him, yeah. I'm serious. Anybody that was facing Rhea Ripley tonight was going to get booed. End of story. No doubt about it. So that would have been an interesting match too, Mother Teresa versus Rhea Ripley. That, you know, that was a joke, but you get the point. No old barn, you know. You know that way, you know, Mother Teresa could, you know, like choke her with her rosary beads. <laughs> well, Ross, hey, that'll uh, get us. That'll, that'll get us. I probably just offended some people. Well, yeah, probably. I'm Do we sorry. give a shit? That's another question. Oh, I do. I'm horribly sorry. You know, I hate to ever do that. You know, I go out of my way to be very sensitive. Sarcasm inbound. All right, there you go. Right. Um, Russ, what'd you think of the show overall? I thought it was like a solid B plus. Oh yeah, me too. Solid B plus. You know, right? Is that now, right? very good? It's it's the best best one they've had show that they've had in a while, you know. Uh, WrestleMania will top it. I'm almost sure, yeah. but 
I don't know that this was better than the Rumble because I think there was a lot of feel-good energy around the Rumble. Uh, without the bullshit of the Vince stuff hovering. Yeah, I, think that, I think this was uh, this was uh, as good, better in some ways, you know? Um. Well, I definitely think the main event was what it needed to be, yeah. you know? Yeah, I disagree with the. I I don't understand how anybody could be baffled as to why that was the main event. They're not. I think even me and you talked about it. I think even you asked me yesterday. You're like the women's three is going on last, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, that would make the most sense. I'm like, I don't think they're going to send her out there in the middle of the show. Yeah, and because that's going to get the biggest pop of the night, and nobody wants to follow the biggest pop of the night. Well, they knew that no matter how this match could have been a fucking stinker. And do you know what? It probably still would have been the hottest match of the night because Rhea. Yeah, but it wasn't a stinker. That's the good part about it. No, but I'm just saying it could have been the drizzling shits. Yes. And the crowd wouldn't have cared. And oh, credit to Nia for actually performing at a very high level here um yes russ what was your favorite match of the night uh, or the day uh, whatever this was i'm so lost on time as far as the overall match beginning to end i have to pick the tag team men's tag team match i agree Being the most exciting and enjoyable you know i thought technically it was the best Women's Chamber is a close second for me, but I agree with you. Yeah. I thought the Men's Chamber was a lot of shenanigans, but it was fun shenanigans. Yes. Um, But like I said, I was very impressed with that Rhea versus Nia. Because neither one of us wanted that match. We were both like, oh, boy. Yeah. but Because no, we but, fucking uh, knew it was going on last. Yeah. Well, you got to understand how this works. <laughs> well, I think business. I think another thing was Triple H did not want people thinking that there was even a chance Rhea was going to lose the title before WrestleMania. Yeah. And he knew the audience was smart enough to know no matter what we say about Nia, this crowd is not going to believe that she's going to beat Rhea because she's not. And we want to do our big Becky Rhea match. So we're going to do it, but we need something in the way. Let's throw Nia out there and Rhea can fucking carry her for 12 minutes or whatever we need to do. There you go. And away we go. But and Russ, I, WrestleMania. I didn't expect to see Triple H show up. He had to poke his head in to say hello for a minute. Well, it is an, an international show. I'm not that surprised. Yep. Um, Russ, WrestleMania is now much a clearer picture than it was Correct. 24 hours ago. Um, We know the main event of night two will be Roman versus Cody. I imagine the night one main event is going to be a rocks, a rock Roman versus Seth Cody tag match or, or they could be holding that off to SummerSlam. I could see that too with the potential of maybe you do Bailey EO night one main event. Yeah, yeah. Um, be a good main event for night one. I I I think Bailey EO probably needs to close the show night one. And thank goodness, by the way, we didn't get to talk about this. Dakota Kai is clear to wrestle. Good. Um and she's gonna be in a tag match next Friday on SmackDown with Bailey and against damage control. All right. Um I would have to think Bailey's winning the title at Mania. I, I would have to think. I don't know that, but I would think Bailey winning the title makes the most sense. It sure does. Who do you the the most unpredictable match that we know about so far is Rhea versus Becky? I have no fucking clue who's gonna win that. I predict Rhea. I mean, 
My instinct says Rhea because, again, I think they're doing this Liv Morgan Rhea thing very long play, very strategically. Well, that would be the case. We'll have to see. And I'll be interested to see because I think there is a chance of this as much as I don't think it's a good idea. There is a chance they Daniel Bryan Liv Morgan into that Rhea Ripley match and make that a three-way. I don't think they should. I hope they don't. Give Liv something else to do at Mania. Get her a win at Mania. But if you're trying to build for Liv versus Rhea, then build for Liv versus Rhea after Mania and do that whenever you're going to do it. If you're going to do it as a trilogy, fine. But what's interesting is all our predictions about going to WrestleMania, you know, are based upon the expectation that they're going to take time to build and tell a story that's going to be engaging. And it's such a contrast to AEW where you can be a week out from a pay-per-view and not have a freaking idea what in the hell is going to be on the card or who's doing what. Or sometimes we know the revolution card. We do know the revolution card at this point. We know the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll take a look at one of these days before that comes up. That's, that's coming up in March something. March two 2nd. weeks from today, I think. Yeah, about two weeks. It's either two well, weeks from today or two weeks from We don't from have tomorrow. to get up in the middle of the night for that one. We might have to stay up late, but we don't have to get up early. Um, Two weeks from tomorrow. All right. Sunday night. It's a Sunday night, which sucks for me, but. Oh, well, it sure does. You Well, you got to get, get up early and go to school. Well, uh, Russ, did you see the news? I just saw this. That um, Adam Copeland is not going to be competing at Revolution due to an injury. Um. No, I guess they, I, I don't think I had heard that. According to this article, they said it Wednesday on Dynamite, but I did not hear it. Oh, maybe that is where here. I think that I had thought I had heard something about that. Yeah. What I um, I kind of I kind of fast forward through parts of Dynamite, so I can't remember if I heard it on Dynamite or if I saw it online or something. Uh, well, it's hard not to fast forward through Dynamite these days, unfortunately. Yeah, that's sad but true. That's. Changed a lot in four or five years. I remember when Dynamite, dude, you couldn't take your eyes off the TV. Well, there was a point when Nitro was must-see TV, and within two or three years, it was can't-watch TV. You know? Now, I still think AEW's pay-per-views are better than WWE's. Generally speaking. Only because they don't do all the filler bull crap. They move along a lot quicker. They're, they're, they're the same length. Their programming in general moves along a lot quicker. They don't have lengthy vignettes. They don't have long uh, spoken intros usually, you know? And they don't have stalling. Right. For as much better as WWE is, they still fucking stall. Oh, yeah. They still putz around. But, Russ, that's going to do it for us here. Yes. Well, it's been nice. And when we get together again, we're going to talk about the uh, the aftermath of uh, Elimination Chamber leading up to WWE and then also uh, leading up toward Revolution on AEW. So we're going to keep track of how those this week's shows build toward those things. I'm I'm really curious as to how the hell they're going to get out of this uh, this whole situation with uh, Sting and Darby. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, because, hope, we through, I hope we get through it without too many more Darby Allen pro, promos. And I said this on the show that hasn't gone up yet because, again, I had a bunch of issues with the file. I do apologize for that. Maybe but, that'll end up being our lost episode. It almost was. Uh, 
So maybe this is the 50th episode. Maybe the last one was. Either way. This, this, this could is... be episode 51 or 50. Wait. Stay tuned and you'll know. Stay tuned. You'll figure it out eventually. Um, Sting and Darby against the Young Bucks. Again, we're not talking too much about AW here. This is mostly an Elimination Chamber reactions and stuff, but I'm still mad about this. <laughs> About the whole the whole tag team scenario, the retired scenario. They have fucked their tag division. Oh, I know. You, you know that's the thing. Uh, putting putting the tag team titles on them didn't seem to make any sense to me. And again, I like AEW. I love Christian Cage. I love what they're doing with Samoa Joe, making him. An ass kicker, which is what Samoa Joe should be. I love what they're doing with Swerve. I like a lot I, of things I on Swerve too. I I'm, I'm even starting to like Daniel Garcia. Well, I've always liked Garcia. I'm excited to see what they do with Osprey, providing they don't Jay White him. Well, I hope not. Deanna Parazzo versus Tony Storm at the pay per view is probably going to be the best match on the show. Very well could be. But god damn it. You know they're gonna fucking close the show with this goddamn sting thing. With the with the uh with the EVPs. The young bucks, the EVPs, the the Jackson boys. Jacques and Pierre. Maybe they'll have their little berets on. Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> yeah. Take those berets off their heads and shove them right up their ass. You know? Never mind. It's like uh, it's like what The Rock said about Cody Rhodes fans stick the chicken nuggets up their ass. Right, Rudy Poo. And Cody was like, and I loved Cody's comments on Raw after that. He was like, "I'm confused about something. What are we supposed to do with the chicken?" There you go. Well, maybe it's like that episode of South Park where Cartman stuck the chicken, uh, the chicken the leg up his ass and then pooped out his mouth. Remember? Why does my Why does my mind remember that? <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, this is yet another lost episode, mostly because <laughs> of the shit we say. Uh, I've been up since three o'clock, man. I'm about punched right here. <laughs> Oh boy! Well, Russ, it was a great. It was a great show, though. I I enjoyed I enjoyed Elimination Chamber a lot, and I always enjoy getting out of the continental United States to sample the the crowd in another part of the world. I wish they'd do a show in Mexico City. They never will, right. but fuck, I wish they would. Well, you know the fans don't get their events WWE events very often here in this country. Uh. You know, in most markets, you're going to be able to go to Raw or SmackDown every year or two, and we get spoiled. And a pay-per-view generally every other year. Correct. Right. If not in certain markets, every year. Right. The bigger markets usually get one a year. Medium gets one every other year for pay-per-views. And the smaller ones, of course, get them once every couple of years. But, Russ... This has been fun, brother. Let's do it again. Yeah, we will be doing this next time. And what will probably be episode number 52, but you never know. Oof. We'll figure it out eventually. All right. Everybody have a All great right. rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Damon, play my fucking music. Russell.